I'm not going to worry about your level of concern. Yoy and double yoy. We talking about Twitter. Ripple yoy. Think of how stupid the average person is, and then realize half of them are stupider than that. Quad ripple yoy. This goes dealers! <laughs> Listen, I trust Mike T wholeheartedly, man. Are we going to give Matt Canada praise? <laughs> Is it the last time we can... <laughs> the last time we can... No, this won't be the last time no, we mention be. Matt Canada. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Whew. Wouldn't it be a great season? The season will be great if today is the last day that we say Matt Canada until... The postseason because there will be, it'll be postseason talk. And, and, and I was going to add that would not only make the season great, but also our lives. Yes, yes. I can't explain it. No. Um, it's what Jin's talking about. The conversation about the Steelers' social media conversation, exposing all your hot and toxic takes. And for once, we're a little light actually this week. You know. <laughs> hey. it's, Although the world burns down and uh, <laughs> Steelers get a uh, Steelers get a conventional win, imagine and, that. And the internet seems to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. I am Kyle Kreis. Across from me is Greg Benevin. Hello. Coming up in the second half, we you know if I will bring up Canada one more time. Sure. You know it's been a week mm -hmm. uh, since he was let go. <laughs> Sneeze. Pardon mm -hmm. me. Sure. And, uh, you know, where are the insiders? There, Once again, proof there are no insiders. We <laughs> haven't gotten the definitive Matt Canada uh, firing story yet. Or if we are, it's coming from outsiders. It's coming from outside the building. Yes. So we'll talk about that in the second half. Um. In the meanwhile, let's just get straight to these. You know, I don't even know how to explain what happened <laughs> Uh, you know, I thought for sure, oh, yeah, Canada, sure, this, Canada, that, but players mm -hmm. need to execute. Right. And then in uh, and then one week, you know, everything changes. Oh, crazy. I think that at Fanta Skippy put it best, mm -hmm. Jeffrey Benedict, 45 games under Canada versus one under Faulkner. Mm -hmm. Yards, 421. That's first. Mm. Ranked first. Yards per play, 6.19. Ranked third in the last 45 games. Mm -hmm. uh, Friarmouth yards, 120. Ranked first in the wow. last 45 games. Mm -hmm. You know, is it really is just as simple as uh, Matt Canada's gone and everything goes back to normal? <laughs> I mean, it, it it feels too easy. It's like when yeah. uh, the characters in the movie wander through the quiet. It feels too quiet here. It, I mean, the main thing I thought of uh, throughout a lot of the game was that for all of Canada's faults, he never got Pat Fryermouth hurt. And having yeah. him come back made a, a big, big change. And not just come back, but come back healthy. Because I'm assuming, and maybe this was something, that uh, a problem with Canada's, I assume Fryermouth wasn't 100% when they played the Browns. Because I think he only had, what, one or maybe two catches for a minimal amount of yards. And obviously that's a much better defense. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in a results-driven business, it's uh, hard not to be pretty shocked by these results. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, I, I thought for sure that it wouldn't be this easy, although... Or look, dramatic difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, heck, but luckily for us, the the <laughs> the haters still find something to, to hate about. The haters are very good at their jobs. Oh, yeah. <whistles> New offense? No, more like at Ben Anderson 58, Ben Anderson. Steelers scored just enough points Sunday despite being pretty efficient on offense instead of instead of scoring just enough points <laughs> despite being pathetic on offense. Um, yeah, we got 400 some yards, but it was still uh, 16 points against the worst defense in the NFL. <laughs> Which it's not. It's one of the worst ones, but it's not as bad as uh, everyone said when they said it was the worst. Two, I mean, that's 
you know, when you think about that sequence of plays, the the Johnson not called touchdown, which I'm still not sure they would have gotten the call even if they'd challenged it, as well as the war and fumble, that's the kind of thing that very easily could have cost them to lose a game before this, just because that's a pretty dramatic swing of events. So yeah, it's they did score just enough points. But I think the other thing that no one ever mentions when they're hating is uh, that's a very big deal. They had the ball that much that Watts spent that much time on the bench because then they weren't tired for another quarterback whose name you do not know to lead a game-winning drive at the last minute. You're exactly right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No um, no, yeah, no yeah, chance for a fourth-quarter comeback. I already forgot no. the guy's name who did it last week for the Browns. Yeah, right. Well, I, right? Can't. I can remember the acronym DTR, but that's only because it's not far from DMR, but – I got nothing. And, this uh, whole season, I, I know it seems like Thanksgiving was uh, a year away. It was right. only um, this season is uh, it's going by too quick yet. It seems like it's taking forever. forever. Let's uh, more more people complaining about this new offense. <whistles> Whoops! At J Hartman underscore Pitt Jeff Hartman Steelers offense is nothing but yards <laughs> right now. <laughs> nothing to show for it. Ah, oh, we were you know we. We didn't have yards, and now we've got it, but no points. What would you rather have, the the offense of weeks one through eight <laughs> or the week 12 offense here of uh, of tons of yards but still right. the same points? Yeah, and, and I also kind of help, can't help but wonder when this was tweeted during the game. I mean, it's one thing to say this in the first half, which was genuinely frustrating because they, you know, they very well could have blown the Bengals out in that first half as much as you can blow out any NFL team in the first half with better execution, not just in the red zone, but once they cross the 50. But it was hard to make the same argument when they're up two scores with two minutes to go. That is something else entirely because that field goal closed out the game as much as a touchdown would have. Yeah, that's right. That is right. Well, I'm not going to – let's. I'm sorry, I'm on the camera. No, I'm no, no, the... I know. It, you saying it means as much to me as Tomlin at this point. I, I genuinely appreciate it. Um, But the bottom line is <laughs> <laughs> at Paul Zeiss. Paul Zeiss. The Steelers with Canada, 16.6 points per game. The Steelers without Canada, 16 <laughs> points per game. This lethargic offense. What's the what's the you know how long until we we start complaining about points and not yards it, now? This what? is this this is pretty awesome trolling. I mean, it's I've had my I have my disagreements with Paul Zeiss about many things, but uh, I thought this was a very very funny troll. It it again, it's easy to be frustrated with what happened uh, with the amount of points they scored, uh, but. That's particularly, again, in the first half. In the second half, they scored 13 points. And, uh, again, we're so the superior team throughout. I forget who made the point. Maybe it was Starkey. It was somebody else that said, you know, for all year we've heard people complain the Steelers don't deserve to win this game. Well, this one they pretty definitively deserve to win. They, uh, they, they deserve to win it, and they won it. Right, um, that too. Tomlin said it was about field position, really, that the, that the final score uh, didn't indi it wasn't indicative of, uh, of what happened in game because of the field position. That's why we're talking special teams. Um, Which weren't great in terms of, like, coverage. I mean, Boswell's amazing, and, you know, the one field goal went a little bit to the right, but he still got it. But the coverage kind of was could left something to be desired and maybe helped the Bengals out quite a bit. So is anyone saying, is anyone straight out saying that uh, Matt Canada was the difference here? Um, <laughs> let's go to at 93.7, the so-called fan, 93.7, the fan. Jalen Warren with the hard truth of the offense without Matt Canada. Quote, more communication and more, I don't know how to say this without being too explicit, more willing to take shots, taking more risks. I didn't hear the exact quote, so I couldn't tell the context. Is this, uh, is he basically saying that Matt Canada was uh, was keeping us too conservative and and now we're opening it up? Is that is that the what the, the Canada factor was? I mean, I, 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 I still find that too hard to believe. I mean, it, it's just very difficult for me to believe one grown man, Matt Canada, saying to the other grown men who are professional football players, no, you can't throw the ball in the middle, that I won't let you take those risks. That's taking too much risk. That's still hard for me to believe. I will say that, you know, the way this quote starts off, more communication and more, I don't know how 
to say this without being too explicit. I thought this was going to be something way more amazing. <laughs> I mean, him walking back, saying, but more willingness to take shots, take more risks. It's like, oh, that's a real release of the tension. The first half of that quote built. Well, you you say I don't I, I don't want to say without being too explicit, but that guy was a pos right, right, sob. Right. Yes, like it was. Just, I mean, Jalen Ward's a very mild mannered, very intelligent, polite man. I mean, he would never say something like that, but it's just like, wow, where where is this going? Oh, oh, okay, oh. I think you two are on the same uh, beans and honey mustard diet. I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard his story, but he uh, uh, he, he leaned out some. With oh, the... good, 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 good. I, I heard he was a, a pudgier child. I did not know exactly how uh, Warren did it. But I mean, it's but also, again, you know, could people playing all year about Najee. This was a game where Najee was the man. I mean, they ha the Bengals had a pretty good plan for Warren. They did a good job against him, even beyond the fumble. Uh, it, but it was Najee that was, you know, was very much one of those guys who could have been given the game ball. That's right. Yeah, this was a uh, hundred yard game until I think the last play when uh, when Najee like lost two or something. Yeah, thanks Canada. <laughs> um, do anything more to say about this new look offense? How about let's do one final thing on this sure. uh, on the offense here, and then we'll never say Matt Canada again until the second half. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> At poll Steelers, Steelers poll. Okay. Yinzers, 400 plus yards. What grade do you give the Steelers offense? A, 15%. B, 69%. C, 15%. D, 1%. Um, you know, this was uh, this was an F offense, I guess, for yes. the first uh, for the first eleven weeks. <laughs> but now we're a jump to a B all of a sudden. Not not an A because what? No points? Is that well? The I think B. Fumbles in the red zone, dropping a pass in the end zone. There was a lot of missed third downs once they kind of got over the uh, the Bengals logo. It I, I heard something. I forget which of the shows I was listening to, but they said something like Colbert used to have the idea that you should get a point for every uh, 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 what is it ten points per for every hundred yards and i remember that you gain and i'm like that seems way too uh wrong a ratio so uh, i'm gonna go with b but like like a regular b not minus or plus like this is a b to build on um you know it's still it's still pretty average i'm gonna give it a c actually how I about think that that's fair too i think that's fair too pretty still average you know mm -hmm. not above you know as far as league wide you know we're uh, that's see that's a good point it's average uh, maybe i'm thinking too much of years ago where it's average in terms of a world where mahomes and hurts and even people like josh allen roam the earth um instead we've got uh who, who rims our earth i guess tj tj i guess yeah, yeah tj well i mean lamar i mean you know yeah it's it's but i meant to, where there's these other quarterbacks putting up these big numbers and big points even in games they lose maybe this is a, a sign that yeah i need to get more at the times myself let's talk about our quarterback it's time to oh my god they groomed Kitty, you mm -hmm. Grooming, back to grooming, You had Kenny. to bring back the grooming. It was only appropriate. The grooming continues. Mm -hmm. At Girl Surgeon, Melanie Friedlander. First game without Matt Canada at offensive coordinator. Kenny Pickett, 24 for 33, 278 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. Offense, 421 yards. And, oh, how about that passing chart? He found the middle of the field. We've got... The passing chart that everyone wanted look green all over. <laughs> it's like we've planted a full uh, a full potato patch here. Yes, and and, and no whammies, uh, no red on it as well, which is always a, a big big thing and an increasingly out of date reference. But yes, it, uh, this is there's all those green dots in the middle, that, but there's still, and I think this is also important too. There's still the green dots far and to the sides. Those deep passes to uh, I believe uh, DJ and uh, George respectively it, uh, so yeah so this is the passing chart uh, minus the touchdown that we were all hoping for since uh, the last year and a half 
And no, look at those behind the line of scrimmage. Only five mm -hmm. uh, plays behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, is it ser is it seriously this? Is were they just like we're not going to do any of the things that we were doing with Matt Canada? Well, I mean, from what I heard, smarter people say they did different things out of different formations. It wasn't necessarily new plays. They just did different formations at different times. And again, you know, we're going to get into the position. I think weirdly, even more now that Canada's gone about explaining what Canada wasn't responsible for which is uh entirely the development of broderick jones who has become such a beast out there and, and so helpful and it just having him be this good uh helps for a lot of different things in many ways so that can't be blamed on canada either and i think he's also responsible for this in part as well we've uh you know we're back to a we're back to the preseason offense the preseason <laughs> offense is here <laughs> Ah, uh, let's move on to... Including that one touchdown they would score in the uh, preseason games yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. At Steelers win 109, Minka Bird Steelers, that Deontay catch is ruled a touchdown, and we're talking about how amazing Kenny played today. He had a great game. Clearly, Canada was 95% of the problem. Uh, I mean, could you say he had a great game? We st it still was not touchdowns. I mean, it, well, if you if this Deontay catch if, yeah. was a touchdown, I, I was about yeah, you beat me to it. That was going to be my point. The, the, this 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 person who I believe is like a cha chaotic good troll, like they root <laughs> for the Steelers, but in a chaotic good trolling kind of way. If Deontay catches that, then I think not only does Kenny have a touchdown, but I think he's also probably over three hundred yards or pretty close to it. So that's then we're saying yeah, he did have a great game. I mean. Where, of course, this person's chaotic good trolling comes out as Canada clearly 95% of the problem. No, <laughs> even if I were going to say that, which I'm not, I'm certainly not going to say that after uh, one week against, um, I'm going to get this right, Jake Browning? Is that the name of the quarterback for the Bengals? I believe. It, okay. But so, yeah, so was Canada part of the problem? Certainly looks that way. Uh, I don't know about 95%. Um, it, it did. Kenny have a great game, you know, I mean, despite the not touchdowns, you know, it's it's more going to be about and we'll get into this, I guess, in the next tweet. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more about the lack of interceptions than the the lack of tur of touchdowns. Yeah, I, I think Kenny played a very good game. I think uh, Kenny did more than enough to win. I think in other games, Kenny did just enough to win or almost not enough to win. It was buoyed by others. But this one, he did enough to win. This might be... The key stat here at Alex Kazora. Alex Kazora. Kenny Pickett is the first Steeler quarterback in history not to throw an interception in seven straight games over the course of a season. Um, is this really more to have to do with why we're seven and four? It, it certainly has a lot to do with it. I mean, and this what's amazing about this stat is this goes back like to like the 30s and 40s out of like the wing T or whatever when they would throw like what five passes a game or something. <laughs> and, um, but I think the other part of it too, and I thought about this during the game, and you and I have talked about this off the air, is that when the Steelers commit a turnover, it really, really screws them up. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> I kind of can't help but wonder if maybe that's what happened with the Warren fumble in the first quarter, and they just kind of never recovered from that in the whole first half. I mean, they're outplaying the Bengals dramatically, and they're trailing by four and haven't scored by that point. So I think with this team, whether it makes sense or not, they really, really get hammered when they commit a turnover. They have to play flawless uh, ball. You know, that's kind of what they're set up to. They're not, they're, you know, they can't have turnovers in games. Which yeah. is so weird because, I mean, if they'd executed just because you're right. But, I mean, but it's so weird because if they just executed a little bit better on the other side of the Bengals 50 in the first quarter, then it wouldn't have mattered that Warren had fumbled. I mean, they had their opportunities to get more field goals or even touchdowns after that, but they just couldn't convert them. But for whatever reason, the way this team is right now, a, a turnover really, really hits them hard. The difference maybe with this pass game is um, – they were able to get first downs yes. so that the turnover didn't cost them the you know maybe mm -hmm. 2 weeks ago that is the that's the turnover that makes the difference in the game absolutely 100%. But, but this past week there was enough offense to mm -hmm. uh to you know fight off the effects of a of a turnover like that and even just to piggyback on top of that and go back to what i said earlier there was enough offense to do that but also enough to offense to keep the defense rested they only had like 40 some snaps or something on defense which was 
the lowest they've had in years. I mean, that was all the stat I needed to see how much better the offense did in this game. We're not urinating on the fire, man. That's right. <laughs> fire is in full effect. We're going to hear that every week now. Full after flames that on the fire. Okay, so that. So let me pose. <laughs> let me pose this question to you then. Uh oh. Because at Blitzburg, Blitzburg says Pickett had no touchdowns and no interceptions in the last three games. Such a weird stat. So would you take no touchdowns? In exchange for no intercept, like say yes. we go out the rest of the season, these last seven games, all right, no picks, but there's not going to be any passing touchdowns either. Are you willing to uh, take that that uh, trade off? A hundred percent, because and, and the only reason I'm willing to take it is because in these four games, they've also run for over 150 yards in each of them, right? Which is like an all-time Steelers record or close to it, including the 70s, including the 90s, the bus, Barry Foster, Franco, like it's that, that they've been running the ball at a clip unlike ever before. Four. So yeah, the no touchdowns and no interceptions thing looms very large when you're just running the ball like crazy. It's good to see the big boy. That's mm -hmm. right. We got big boys out there now. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, why don't we get to the second half? Okay. We talk, uh, enough talk about the offense. We've okay. uh, we never talked defense. We'll do a little bit of that. Good. Did I lose the uh, the music? How about um, oh, and then. Where were the Canada insiders? You know, these people who were they're there to, the, to get the answers. And when it came to the biggest story in Steeler... Recent. I, I mean, I, maybe not history, but big, it was, it's up there. It's in up there. In recent years, absolutely, this is up there. Yeah. Where were the insiders? They weren't there. The national media <laughs> had seems to have all the answers. We'll, we'll, we'll investigate. That is coming up in the second half. Please enjoy our sponsors like Hills Department Store. According to legend, little folk know Hills is where the toys are. Hills has toy layaway. Just 10% down, a small service charge, and regular budget payments. Aisle after aisle, hundreds of toys for fun and for learning, for girls and for boys. Low prices, selection, and toy layaway. More good reasons why they say Hills is where the toys are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the second half of what Jin's talking about. Mm. My biggest question okay. in the past 10 days or so is, is since the B, B, not not BC, uh, AC after Canada, <laughs> 10 days after Canada, mm -hmm. is where are, what's the real story? You know, okay. what's the, uh, maybe we won't get it until Canada writes his book like BA had to write his book before uh before we heard about Canada what happened. doesn't strike me as the has to write a book kind of guy, but maybe he is. I don't know. Now's the time, you know. <laughs> That's memoirs, true. Memoirs That's are big true. now. That's Brit true. Brittany... Uh, Jada Pinkett, Matt Canada. That's all three of them right there. That's what I. That's what I'm asking for Santa for Christmas. <laughs> um. All right. So where were the Canada insiders? Let's get to this tweet here. We'll go back to Blitzburg. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. at Blitzburg. Diana Russini says it was truly Mike Tomlin's call to fire Matt Canada. Quote. Head coach Mike Tomlin had multiple discussions with the staff, including his boss, Steelers owner Art Rooney, before informing Canada he was out after three seasons of play calling. I was told by team sources the decision was truly Tomlin's call. While ownership listened and supported the head coach, he was never instructed or pressured to make a change. And look, now I know it's not important about who decided it was, you know, Matt Canada. To me, it's more important that. The story that where is this? Where is the inside story? These people mm. are paid to be quote unquote insiders. We follow their tweets every week for the past three years, uh, from the P Pittsburgh Post Gazette to the Trib to DK to uh, who are some of who would the other insiders oh, be? There's the, a bunch of them. The I mean, fan, I guess. The, yeah, fan. the fan is technically an insider. I mean, I I would think as an insider is anyone that's there for practice. That would be because you're literally inside. You are inside the building. You are inside the facility. You are allowed to see the things. You can't comment on them, but you are allowed to see the things that others cannot. So yeah, if you're in the locker room, so Wexel. Uh, um, Chris Carter, you know, all these guys, you, you, uh, you're supposed to have this inside access, but nobody has come out with the, 
you know, uh, annotated <laughs> Canada <laughs> story yet. Um, uh, you know, is it, it, it I mean, is there more to this than what than meets the eye? I feel like there's still this is a big decision. This was there, there must have been a process to this uh, more than just uh, Tomlin decided now was the time, or, or Tomlin deciding on a Sunday night that it was time. I mean, it's there very well could be. Uh, it's also not impossible that it wasn't that Tomlin really did. You have to take him at his that we, you really should take him at his word that he decided on a Sunday night or a Monday morning or however it was when he and decided that was the time to finally get rid of Canada. It, the one thing I do think is I don't think we're ever going to know the real story behind this because we don't know the other stories. We never, I mean, B.A. wrote his book and I haven't read it, but I mean, we don't have a definitive story of exactly how the B.A. thing went down other than what B.A. said. We still don't know definitively the story of Tom being hired because remember the post because that had it the night or somebody had it the night before it might have been Dulac it might have been Bouchette that it was going to be Russ Grimm and they went into that press conference talking about it that Tomlin's first press conference when he was announced so no I, I don't think we're ever going to know I think the Steelers I think the, the insiders that the Steelers have I think the Steelers are very good at giving them what they want them to have and being opaque and blocking them out on what they don't want them to have and I think a decision such as getting rid of a coordinator for the first time since VE day is something that they really want to be able to protect you I think you hit on something that they like having their access to the locker room they mm -hmm. can fill their little stories about you know Jalen Warren had this to say Mason mm -hmm. Cole had this to say but the big stories, uh, we're not getting, you know, um, Mad Canada being fired. You know, even some things, uh, some off the field story. You know, we still, I, I don't, I haven't got the whole story about Charles Johnson. Um, I still don't have the whole story about Dwayne Haskins. Oh, still don't yeah. have the whole story about um, um, the wrestler. Who were we just talking about a few months ago? Um, the wrestler. Uh, Carlton Hasselrig. Yeah, Carlton Hasselrig. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, those ones, are, those guys haven't played in years. I mean, it, it won't mean not her, uh, uh, Haskins, but I mean, that's, I can see them not running those down, but you're right. Those are real stories. I mean, that's beyond the purview of sports, all three of those tales. I mean, that's, that's life and death. I mean, I, I come back a lot to Myron Cope's line. I forget exactly who he said it to and in what context, but the idea that the sports page is the toy box. And that's what they're there for. They're there to show you the toys, to take you through the toys. Whereas these other things, I mean, that's, which, and again, 99% of the time, that's fine. That's what you want. You want to hear Warren say, well, we ran hard and it, hopefully I don't get a fine, et cetera, et cetera. But every now and then you're right on something. When there is something this large, it would, uh, uh, more clarity would be helpful. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's like do a little bit of a, it's a little bit harder work, you know, than to just <laughs> stick a mic in front of uh, a player's face and then write that quote down as your story. And um, also have your camera in such a way so it doesn't capture any of the nude men behind him, like getting it in the right view. At, uh... Um, now... One insider who, who the only insider who seemed to have the scoop was mm -hmm. Dulac, who said that it was the Roonies right. who who uh, made the final call, and he's sticking to that. In fact, in his uh, in his chat, someone asked, "Oh, are you upset that Tomlin?" Uh, refuted your report, and he said Tomlin didn't refute my reporting. I'm thinking, well, what uh, <laughs> didn't he? I thought so, too. I mean, again, this could be one of those things that's a semantic argument in terms of how that conversation actually went down between Rooney and Tomlin. Hopefully, in uh, uh, the next time Tomlin shows up on the pivot, we can get some clarity on it. Because, I, mean, he'll, he'll I mean, those guys can probably get to the truth on this. But, uh, but yeah, it does seem, you know, it came out of that meeting with, uh, uh, did Rooney say it was, was his decision? Was it Tomlin's decision? But, uh, and maybe, and who knows how it was presented to Canada. Canada, which is still the most important part of that but uh but yeah i i we're not gonna i don't think we're ever gonna know the real truth of this so can we trust any more insiders well i you know then i go right back to more insider reports we've got at kyle beagle kyle beagle dulac jerry dulac reporting mm -hmm. matt canna didn't involve assistant coaches in game plan uh we kind of we've kind of t touched we've on this heard before. That before that's not that that i remember hearing at least last year if not the year prior it was the story about the notes 
like Canada would make a million little post-it notes and like leave them around or like put them in like a little uh, thing and give them to the other people. And uh, and the fact that I have this image of the post-it notes means that this was definitely reported at a prior time. This makes a lot of sense. And this is the kind of leak I would expect us to get over the next several uh, months or even longer about the uh, how hard Canada might have been to work with. I can see these whether or not I can see those kind of leaks coming out. Could you see this as being a factor in the decision? It's just like, if that's his style, like, hey, I'm not really a collaborative uh, type of guy, um, is, you know, that could be a detriment to uh, to a team atmosphere, or is it just how he likes to run his room? Well, it could be both, and this is also one of the few theories about the way Canada works that is actually buttressed by the Steelers' performance on Sunday. Whereas maybe Faulkner and Sullivan wanted to run more of these concepts and plays, the kinds of plays that they did and Canada didn't. And that could explain why we saw a different kind of performance. All right. Okay. You know, as long as you can keep my tombstone or whatever, I'll take the W. Just take the W. I don't care. (laughs) Um, But, you know, another chance this week for insider info. (laughs) And again, we turn to the national source at Adam Schefter. Adam Schefter sources Steelers wide receiver Deontay Johnson got into a heated post-game locker room argument last Sunday with teammate Mika Fitzpatrick before Cam Hayward and TJ Watt broke up the altercation. Um, this was after the Browns game, though. This wasn't yeah, the Yeah, this game. happened after the Browns, but yes. the, the incident happened after the Browns game, but the mm. report came mm. this week from a national source, not a local source. Um... We definitely heard last week, though, that he had some kind of interaction with Minka. I didn't hear this part about TJ and Cam, but uh, we definitely heard last week about uh, DJ having an argument, having words with Minka. Or, we yeah. saw him on the sideline with yeah. the coach, yeah, mm-hmm. yelling and that. But, um, you know, as far as this, an argument that got so heated that Minka, uh, you know, you know, which made <laughs> the me- three team leaders on defense, if not the three team leaders, period. Yeah, no, and I'm up. thinking, well, you know, what is Minka, if, if Deontay, if he's not bad in Canada, Minka's not like defending Canada. Hey, uh, leave Matt alone. He's <laughs> trying his best out there, Deontay. <laughs> Um, which makes me think that uh, it got more personal than that, maybe. even. Yeah, and, and I think or more heart, more personal or just more heated. I mean, it's particularly in the context of a game being over. It, I think if, if, you know, you lose the game and Deontay's mad and Deontay just keeps yelling, at some point it's going to be like, okay, man, we got we to get showers and get on the bus. Like, it's all right, we can deal with this another time. It, uh, and I think also, too, this story, because this story came directly on the heels of Najee's Post game comments after the Browns thing game where Najee had those big long pauses and we got to figure this out and et cetera, et cetera. You know, so it seemed it's I mean, it's it's such a cliche to say, ah, all these things together came to a head. Uh, Because how many times have we dismissed that exact idea? But it really seems like after that Cleveland game, things may have actually come to a head. Why do you think this? Uh, once again, these locker, these guys with locker room access, didn't get this story about DJ and Minka. I don't know. I mean, we didn't find out about the. We still don't know the truth about whatever happened with DJ and Mitch in the game where Kenny came in against the Jets last year. And I, I mean, we 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 don't we don't know these stories. And they're also, you know, as much as we talk about the insiders having a locker room access, they don't have locker room access immediately. It's not like they're in there right after the game ends. There is that moment where Tomlin talks to them and kind of gives them not the talking points necessarily, but talks to the players. And, you know, and a lot of the reporters have talked about this over the years. You can tell exactly what Tomlin told them because it's the line most of them repeat afterwards. So it's entirely possible that this kind of thing happened before the reporters got in there. Then who who leaked it out then? You know, I mean, it, I have no clue. Without a quote, if, <laughs> I would have said a player if there was a specific quote. If it was something like, "Yeah, Deontay said, mm-hmm. uh, well, Minka, you don't got any picks this year, or something like that," then I've been like, "Oh, that was a player because it was a direct quote." The yeah. fact that there's no direct quotes and it's kind of just uh, there was a dust up in the locker room. Right, it, it could be an agent or. Um, second hand someone yeah, absolutely not this could room. be a game of telephone going on with this as well especially because it's you'll notice it's all the names you recognize it's not like uh especially particularly nationally it's not like demonte kz jumped in there or uh or killabrew yeah captain right. killabrew uh, captain yeah. right captain uh, but yeah uh, armand watts who's an enormous man broke them up like you know 
I just wish this came from the local insiders. You know, the fact that we're getting the Adam Schefter. It's like, why? I mean, you know, it makes me, why am I following? Why am I, you know, I mean, well, DK's free now. does not a pay anymore. But why am I paying for some of these? The, my my uh, my currency of, of time and attention. Um, you know, why am I giving uh, some of these people that my time and attention when uh, they're not, they're no more insiders than the blogs that I write for. I, <laughs> no, it's certainly a valid point. I mean, as the rise of citizen journalism uh, continues, it, uh, you have to wonder about the values of some things. Uh, do we want to keep talking about Deontay? I don't know. This is like the story I don't even care about this week. Mm -hmm. um, we'll give one, we'll give one comment to it at G. 95 O Brian Brian Gallagher at least when AB quit on the Steelers it wasn't mid play <laughs> with a live ball on the ground at his feet Deontay was unbearable today <coughs> um we heard the apology uh we heard what Tomlin said about you know T mm -hmm. Tomlin didn't seem to care I, I come back to when Deontay was getting his extension and Tomlin was kind of like yeah he plays the game the way that I like the game played you know Deontay is a Tomlin guy mm -hmm. so I think that anything that you know oh he runs backward yeah I don't think he necessarily does oh he uh he's not paying attention I'm I give Deontay the benefit of the doubt on these things well I will the one thing I will the only thing I will disagree with you there is if Tomlin did care about this because Tomlin did say that Deontay will apologize to his teammates or Deontay will be accountable to his teammates for this and he apologized for it he stood up and said he won't do it again and they accepted it which to me is enough because I'm not on the team and uh the other part of it while I was very irritated when this happened in the moment Deontay made up for it throughout the game I don't know if they win without the deep pass he caught uh, uh, both of them especially the one where Kenny did not make a good throw and Deontay picked it basically off the ground and ran for a very big first down so uh, Deontay made the plays throughout the rest of the game he didn't let it take him out of the game and then he apologized to his teammates in person that's good enough for me for this week I still consider him. Is he the? He's the wide out one. He's, the, he's oh yeah, because he's open. Yeah, yeah, especially because you have to, because he's so good at getting open. Uh, he does, you know, maybe drop the ball a bit more than you'd like. But the other teams know that they have to try and take Pickens away. Pickens can hurt you more immediately through the deep touchdown, through the game changing play. Whereas Deontay can make the first down, then make the next first down, then you know you can try if you don't have your best guys on Deontay, well, maybe you'll get another chance in the next series. So I think Deontay is, when he's in there, usually the first target for Kenny. All right. How the, the final word, and then we'll never <laughs> talk about Matt Canada again until the Yinzi Awards at the uh, end of the season. Until one of these goofballs says the same nonsense yeah. a few years from now. At SteelerFan11, Ethan, breaking. Is this breaking? Breaking. <laughs> Todd Haley says on Sirius XM he would consider coming back to the Steelers if Tomlin called. Make this happen. <laughs> Who's thrown their hat in the ring? We've got uh, Todd Haley throwing his hat in the ring. We've got um, Byron Leftwich Byron throwing Leftwich. his hat into the ring. Who else is? AB? Uh, AB is in there. We've got three quality candidates. You already. know who definitely has not thrown their hat into the ring? Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger. He may be uh, nominated <laughs> by petition or something. <laughs> yeah, but if yeah, if elected, he will not serve. That is uh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I mean, if you have a podcast, you too can be the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I guess. No, I I had actually forgotten until I think there was another tweet under this. I had totally forgotten Haley was the offensive coordinator for the Browns for like a year. He was Baker's first offensive coordinator. I had no idea. I totally forgotten about that. Oh, that's the classic hard knocks moment where the coach is only meeting uh -huh. and there some players aren't practicing because of injuries. Okay, and Todd says we got to get out there and practice. If we don't practice, we're not going to play and Hugh Jackson just kind of says this is my team I'll do things how I want to wow yeah okay it's a, uh, it's a great hard knocks moment where Todd gets put in his place but Todd <laughs> might have been might have been right uh, yeah <laughs> exactly in retrospect it's hard not to think Todd is maybe on to a point here it um no I I uh, uh, I mean it, it's I, I, I'm I, well, I I don't want Todd I I, I I come down to let's have the biggest search possible um I, I find myself feeling a little tight in the chest whenever someone suggests Frank Reich 
but uh, the guy certainly had a lot of success as an offensive coordinator. Uh, not so much uh, other than that. But um, but let's have a big search when the season ends. Let's have the biggest search possible. Let's talk to everybody. I don't know what if we what if we win this division. Okay, right now the, it's in our hands. We win out. We win the division. Um, let's say we don't even win the division. Let's say we just make the playoffs as a wild card. Sure. How would you not? Tell Eddie Faulkner, hey, you're the guy who got us here. Uh, you're gonna have to step down while we bring in Byron Lethwich. Uh, I mean, it's it's you do that by pointing at however many points they scored. I mean, at, the, at that point, it depends on how they got there. I mean, if they got there because they were putting up 30 and 40 points a game, sure. But if they got there playing the way they are, the, the this is the idea always wasn't for this offense to top out at 25 points. That was never the goal. I mean, you have to do the biggest search possible, even if it is like when they when they ended up signing Omar, they did have a big search. They brought in everybody. It, there's just too many good options out there to limit yourself to just the guys that you have. You're right. They did bring everyone in just to say it was Omar. You right. know, it, it, and they, but they let go of a guy who's good at his job. I mean, the other guy wasn't a moron. Like, he was tremendous, yeah. and he's done a fine job with the Eagles. Every, we were rooting. A lot of us, yeah. maybe myself, I think we were rooting for. I can't even think of it. I can't either, now. but it was so good. It was That's how, that's how I, I, there's just been so much nonsense since then, Kyle. That's exactly how it goes. <laughs> it's just too much, man. It's just too much. Can we talk about defense? I don't know. We might have the splashiest <laughs> defense uh, since 08. Can we talk it's defense? It's crazy. Mm-hmm. At Steelers fan GA, Kevin, the Steelers, the Steelers defense stopped the run 16 yards on eight carries for Joe Mixon. Mm-hmm. Chase held to 81 yards and no touchdowns. Now, Mixon did have a big screen. I mean, that's a little yes. deceptive. Which he did was have- also a play where apparent and Kazora found this. I haven't seen anyone else back this up. Steelers had 10 guys on the field during the Mixon screen. Uh. So somebody messed up somewhere there. Isn't that the second time in a couple weeks? Yeah, we've had 10 guys that's the. Uh, yeah. But, mm-hmm. you know, the defense. Uh, oh, th- they were great. Th- what, you know, th- three points? Um, yes. Or I shouldn't say, what, three points in the second half? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I, I mean, I look, I don't see Justin Jefferson. I don't see a lot of Tyreek. For the mo- for my money, the guys I see, Jamar Chase is the best wide receiver in the NFL. The guy had 81 yards, and they were entirely off of his own greatness. I mean, what was it, 40-some yards off of tip passes that he tracked down in midair and ran with? I mean, what, what are you going to do about that? No, Rod Woodson in his prime isn't stopping that. Yeah, they were on the on the luck side. All the luck went on uh, went the Bengals' way, which yeah. I think is what's such a big reason about why it was so neat to win this game. Because it's without the offense being the way it was, the Steelers needed all the luck to go their way to win the games that they have. Yeah, like Art Rooney, Art Art uh, Senior, the Chief takes mm-hmm. luck. This is going to be yes. a team of luck, that's for sure. Yeah, it has been. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go. Let's talk TJ okay. at. ML football, ML football, breaking, another, mm. more breaking, breaking news again. They Steelers pass breaking. rusher TJ Watt is now the favorite to win the NFL Defensive Player of the Year award per bet online AG. Um, you know, stat wise, he's always been the elite, mm-hmm. but we were kind of talking earlier in the season. Well, if we're not necessarily playoff caliber, does TJ be in that kind of conversation? But, you know, he's, de- I think. At seven and four, we're definitely uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one, I I think there's no problem with TJ winning uh, a defensive player of the year. I mean, I I did hear what is it? There's a, a Cowboys cornerback that has five interception returns for touchdowns. I don't know what his other stats are, but if they give it to that guy, I'm not going to be too mad. I mean, that's unbelievable. And thirdly, the one thing I thought when I looked at this is this is per bet online AG. So they know by putting this up, this is going to get someone to bet. You got all the Steeler fans betting on TJ. You got all the Browns fans betting on Miles. You can, uh, uh, the Cowboys fans betting on that other guy or Micah. By putting this up there, that is, that is the, it, it, it's posting the line that's going to get a lot of action. So I uh, uh, this might be a, a way of a bet online AG uh, getting a few bucks. But again, I, I don't think it's crazy. I think he leads the league in sacks, but he has so much more than just sacks, and the team is in position to make the playoffs. It's hard to keep a guy. I mean, he could almost, I, I hate using this phrase because they, they use it so often now. He's like the chalk pick. Like if no one else does something crazier during the rest of the season and TJ continues on the pace he is, yeah, he probably will win. 
Um, you, uh, what was I going to say? You were talking about betting. Man, the yeah. betting is just over the top. I know, <laughs> yes. I know we're, you know, sponsors, uh, you know, this network is betting sites as well too, but man, it's just so over the, it just feels like, um, I don't know. It just feels like, you know, we don't put cigarette ads in cartoons. <laughs> um, you know, like, why is there so much gambling ads in sports? I don't it know. Is, it's just... It is a lot. I was, and also, I mean, I, I sitting here where we are recording this podcast right now, I saw it's Steelers by six on Sunday. That's why that's yeah. And I'm like, ah, that's a big line for uh, 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 a team that hasn't scored a lot of points. Wow. I think Wex, I think it was Wex who had the stat. It was something like after winning two division games, Steelers are like three and seven on their oh, follow-up I or totally something. Oh, I totally believe that. I mean, how often do the Steelers play two games in Ohio in a row? <laughs> I bet in 90 whatever years it is of Steelers football, that's a rarity. Uh, all right. Why don't we get the band on the field here? Some odds and ends. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wanted to talk Pro Bowl real quick because uh, we were talking Defensive Player of the Year. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I would vote TJ for Pro Bowl. What sure. about Alex? He doesn't have the numbers, really. Four and a half sacks. I mean, he's one of those guys that I could see the fans voting in just because, but it's also like, oh, it's all the other. He could be one of those ones where he gets voted in and you hear the announcer say all the time, it's all of the other things he does. It, I, I yeah. could see that happening at, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of these guys that like, because the Steelers are the Steelers will get voted in for many years, despite not having the best statistical year because they're Steelers. I mean, Pouncey went like nine years in a row or something. It, and they, it was very good, but he wasn't like the best center in the AFC's nine straight years. Yeah, I could see Joey Porter getting some votes that way this right, year. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah, Broderick Jones, like that kind of thing. All right, some odds and ends here, starting with... Speaking of individual accolades, yes. at Teresa Varley, Teresa Varley, congratulations to James Harrison and Heinz Ward, hey. who are semifinalists for Hall of Fame Class of 2024. We've seen this with Heinz year in and year out, mm-hmm. year in and year out. Uh, Toblin, though, gave his endorsement yes, he did. this week, and I thought that gave me new life, like, all right, maybe there is a chance. Maybe I it- mean, I, I've, I just thought... I've given up for years that Heinz would ever get in unless he had like, you know, I mean, obviously this is atypical, but had a LeBeau like coaching career where Heinz went on to a very successful coaching career. And then many decades from now, they're like, wow, this guy was a great player. He's been a very good coach. Let's get him in. But I don't know. I mean, between Tomlin and I saw Ed Bouchette talk for the first time since his retirement, at least for me on uh, the Post Gazette's podcast with Brian Batko. And he said he believed Heinz should get in it. Uh, there's so many receivers with so many bad better numbers but Heinz numbers aren't bad and by any means it uh it would be great I, I don't know but maybe it's not impossible um it doesn't it just we're running out of time because he kind of loses he kind of loses his place in the zeitgeist you know like uh people our age remember Heinz Ward but we're getting to that age where uh people younger than us only know him from like Super Bowl 40 highlights and, and we're also getting to the age where a lot of the receivers coming in now are going to have the crazy numbers from when the game changed even further where you're going to get these guys you know I mean it's it's look look at who's, who he's up against now it's what Anquan Bolden Steve Smith Andre Johnson who had a good career but I don't think ever won anything did he uh... and um yeah oh and Torrey Holt who I'm surprised isn't in already. That guy's a Super Bowl champion too. But yeah, I mean, it's you're going to start seeing the, a lot of wide receivers with a lot of crazy numbers. So the sooner, if Hines is going to get in, the sooner it sure feels like the better, unless it's, like I said, decades from now uh, when we're nominating him for leading the Moon's first NFL team to a Super Bowl or something as coach. Right. <laughs> Run, running out of time there, Hines. This might be the year. This might be it. What about James Harrison? You've, you, we've said here before, don't think it's, uh, don't think he's gonna be yeah it's just because again for the same reasons there's so many guys with so many better numbers i mean it's harrison falls into that weird trap with guys that speaking of guys who did get in like terrell davis and kurt warner who you know they might not have had the greatest careers of all time but they had some of the best seasons ever um someone who is not (laughs) eligible 
for the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Well, at Noah Hills, Noah Hills, Jeff Reed was once a reliable kicker for the Steelers. Now he's an operating partner for a new Pittsburgh-themed sports bar in Charlotte. I stopped by Carolina Steel oh. last month to speak with Jeff for our Warians Now series. We should have thought of that. We should have thought of that. Um... Not only does Jeff, uh, the operating partner, it sounds like he's like the bartender too, and everything. Like, he's like doing the dishes. He's not just the money good guy. For him. Is good it good for, for him? him? I don't well, know. I, I, the last time I thought of Jeff Reed, he was punching out that uh, paper towel dispenser in the Sheets bathroom. That's the last time I remember Jeff Reed. So this seems like a big step up. This seems like something he'd be exceptionally good at. I mean, it seems. Can you imagine anyone more fun as a bartender than Jeff Reed? I mean, it's the guy. So I mean, this seems like a good match. Uh, uh, this seems like a good thing. I'm going to stay, uh, l- like the offense, I'm going to stay cautiously optimistic for this. We might have to do a live, we'll do a show live from <laughs> Carolina Steel. Um, that would be fun. At Chris K. Turney. Chris mm-hmm. Turney. Ravens are 9-3, and three, left on their schedule. Rams, Jags, Niners, Dolphins, Steelers. Steelers 7-4 and four, face Cards, Pats, Colts, Bengals, Seahawks, Ravens. Mm-hmm. Brown seven and four face Rams, Jags, Bears, Texans, Jets, Bengals. My prediction: This is Chris Turney's prediction. Ravens okay. twelve and five, Steelers eleven and six, Browns nine and eight. I'm not even so too worried about the Browns because right. they don't have a quarterback. There's a lot going on, but there, yeah. Ravens certainly have a schedule that uh, you know I could see them losing two more. Yes. Um, it looks like Week 18. It's going to come down to Week 18 at Baltimore. It very well could for the division. It, it, I mean, it might not. The Steelers can drop a game or two here. You never know. The Colts might be. That's that may be a de facto kind of playoff game between the Steelers and Colts when that shows up in uh, three weeks. But um, but yeah, it's it's the Ravens absolutely. You know, the Jaguars could be better than we thought. The 49ers might be coming. The 49ers again. The Dolphins at some point have to win a game against a team with a winning record, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, then again, this could all come down to week 18 and it could all come down to the division only for the wild card round to be right. Bra- uh, Baltimore, Pittsburgh match rematch yes, again, again, you know, in like six days. Exactly. Because of how weird this, there's only one buy and everyone on the division winners get home games, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera thing. Yes. And I would hope at this point we have a better way of pl- figuring that out than we did in 2020, but uh, every situation's different. I, I, I can't think that far ahead, not on a week with God help us all Thursday night football. So if the Steelers do lose another one, say mm-hmm. let's say they uh, they beat Cards and Patriots, then lose to the Colts here, mm-hmm. um, it, it's kind of no sweat. It's like no matter where you end up in the wild card position, um, you know, there's not like oh I, I don't I don't want to go to right. Jacksonville or I don't want to go to Miami, I don't want to go to Baltimore. It's kind of I feel like if it's kind of all up for grabs there. I don't yes, know. no, I agree with that 100. percent I mean, it's in large part because I doubt. Uh, and I think we're, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, we don't think, we th- both think the Chiefs are getting the bye. I mean, I know the team has struggled. I know the, the offense isn't hasn't looked like what it was, but between Mahomes in the playoffs and a genuinely good Chiefs defense, uh, I still think they're going to be the one. So, yeah, I agree with you. All right, let's give the final word. Who did I follow this week? I gave a follow to at Versa underscore styling crystal... Aeneas, mm-hmm. the man babies on this app that cry and whine over the Steelers on a daily basis are intolerable. I don't know how some of them are married, to be honest. I'd be embarrassed if I were their wives. <laughs> that earned you a follow for yes, me. Yes, it That's- does. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. I don't know how some, I don't think some of these tweeters are married, uh, to be honest. I, I don't know. I, I, would, I, I, for, I, I hope in terms of uh, evolution. Well, I think that's what we've been talking about. That's what we've been talking about. Um, just one day away from hell raising season. It's, it comes sooner and sooner every year. And uh, then, then it's uh, you know, then it's the final stretch into the playoffs. Uh, man, this year this going by so quickly. It I don't really want it to. Has. I don't want it to be over soon. We've yeah, got the, five or six. Well, games just because left. we know that after the season ends, you and I have to deal with like the draft. And like mock drafts and, and all this, so yeah, it's it's the season. I, as I as I, this this podcast has helped me to cherish it more than ever. If you want to keep the conversation going, I still have a blame Canada sticker to send out. I'm They're sorry. They're going to be collectors get... items. This yeah. is great. You, now you want yeah. them especially. You can be the first person to say blame Canada when you know they go for a two yard loss like a month from now. 
If you want to keep the conversation going, I'm on TikTok at Kyle Christ. Greg, where can we find you? Uh, on Instagram at Greg Benevent, B as in boy, E N E, V as in Victor, E N T. Um anything to tease no just you can find this on youtube if you're oh that's to right it, yeah. yeah yeah leave a comment on youtube mm-hmm. or subscribe we get those numbers up um watch us live you can be like there's a man who needs to shave and <laughs> it's both of us today i didn't shave today either um and until then i guess uh just keep listening to your coach be the best selves that's gonna be required stay in school